They was not scared of Suge Knight. They was terrified. Yeah, you heard right. It's a thing to be scared of someone. Being terrified is on another level. Suge Knight came in and those who know him started running in different directions. No words, no actions, just reputation. Here's why everyone was terrified of Suge Knight. Before we start the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Done? Let's get into it. Before now, Suge Marion Knight was the king of the West Coast. You must have heard about a person who ran the streets or someone who dominated his field. Well, Suge ran the studio and the streets simultaneously, but one was at the detriment of the other. You see, Suge had a number of friends that ranged from famous rap stars to gang lords, and because of that, he was really powerful at the time. If you still have no clue why Suge terrified everyone, then I help you. That's only because he has a long list of a criminal history. You might have known that he's currently locked up for something he did back in 2015, but before we get to that, let's go back to 1987 when his criminal record started. In October 1987, Knight revealed how crazy he is when he assaulted his girlfriend and chopped off her ponytail on the street. He was then arrested and charged with domestic violence. On Halloween, Knight was arrested for allegedly stealing a vehicle while carrying a concealed weapon. He was also charged with attempted murder because he was not only alleged of stealing a vehicle, but was also alleged of firing at the driver three times during the auto theft. He pled guilty to a misdemeanor charge and was placed on probation for two years. You need to know that Suge was once a football player who played for the Los Angeles Rams. After playing only two games as a replacement with the LA Rams, Suge made his first attempt into the music industry. He started by being a concert promoter and a bodyguard to stars like Bobby Brown. But you know, Suge isn't someone who would be okay staying behind someone. So in 1989, he started his own music production company, co-founded by Dr. Dre. That was a great move, right? But Suge soon picked up battery charges. In October 1990, Robert Van Winkle, also known as Vanilla Ice, had just found fame after he released his song, Ice Baby, that topped the charts. That was a huge one for him, but there was a problem. And the only problem was that the song allegedly included material written by Mario Johnson, Suge's client. Suge wanted to have a share of the success, so he tried to persuade Van Winkle on different occasions to sign over royalties. No matter how much he tried, Van didn't seem to be interested in the deal, so Suge tried to use another means. Somebody else in my whole entourage up. Suge took me out on the balcony, started talking to me personally. On the balcony. On the balcony, high above, like 15 floors. In 1992, Suge Knight violates his probation by assaulting two rappers at a Hollywood recording studio. And in 1995, Suge pleaded guilty to a felony for armed robbery and assault with a firearm. Tupac Shakur was in prison in 1995, serving four and a half years around the time of his signing. It was Suge who paid his bail, which was about a million dollars, bringing him out from behind bars during the time his conviction was being appealed. Tupac was signed to Suge in exchange for his release. Fortunately for both of them, Tupac made it big by the following year after he released his All Eyes on Me. And now by what I mean by make it big, I meant on death row because we all know Tupac was already trending before that. But unfortunately, that wouldn't last long. In September, Suge and Tupac and their entourage attacked Orlando Anderson. Shortly after they left the Mike Tyson boxing match, the group returned to the lobby of their hotel and were caught by the camera in the lobby beating Anderson. That incident would later make Anderson a suspect as Tupac and Knight were attacked a few hours later. The vehicle that contained Tupac and Knight was riddled with bullets in a drive-by shooting. That incident took Tupac Shakur's life five days later. It was really crazy though. Knight was grazed by bullets while driving the car when Tupac was fatally shot. He was said to be the orchestrator of that incident. Let's not mix things up. Tupac had a big rivalry back then. The Notorious Big. That whole East Coast, West Coast thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, when someone gets shot and he has a rival, the rival might become a suspect. But due to the incident that happened involving Orlando Anderson, Anderson was suspected. Not long after Tupac Shakur died, his rival Big also suffered a similar fate in a drive-by shooting in Los Angeles. For the scuffle that happened hours before the death of Tupac, Suge Knight was arrested for violating the terms of his parole and was sentenced to nine years in prison. Even though Suge was in jail at the time Biggie was killed, he still came under the suspicion for his murder. But according to Snoop Dogg, who was his former artist, Suge was involved in both murders. Russell Poole, an ex-detective, also said Suge had something to do with both murders. How so? He claimed Suge ordered the killing of Tupac because Tupac wanted to leave his label. But Suge would rather see him dead than see him signed to another label, and that he also ordered the killing of B.I.G. to divert attention from himself. In 2001, he was released after serving five years in prison. 
As part of his parole conditions, he was not allowed to make contact with his former partner, Dr. Dre. In December 2002, Nat was arrested again, this time for violation of his probation after moving to Malibu without notifying his parole officer. As if that wasn't enough, he was also found to be consorting with no gang members. He was behind bars for 61 days and got released after that. But you see, there's something about Shug. He simply doesn't know how to follow rules. He just does his thing, the way he wants, not thinking, or afraid of consequences. In June 2003, Suge allegedly punched the parking lot valet outside a Los Angeles nightclub. He was done at the club. He wanted to take his leave, but found that his car had been blocked, so because of that, he allegedly punched the parking lot attendant. And for that, he got arrested and served 10 months in jail for that offense. In 2005, Nat was stopped for an illegal U-turn, and after his vehicle was searched, police found marijuana in his vehicle. He was found to have violated his parole. He was then jailed for a week and then placed under house arrest for two months. By 2006, Suge Knight had no choice but to file for bankruptcy, and that's because he's been going in and out of jail, and it's almost impossible to successfully run his music business behind bars, and also because those that were associated with him were leaving the company, one after the other. On April 4th, Suge declared himself in Death Row Records bankrupt and claimed debts of more than $100 million. In 2008, Suge was involved in another altercation, but this time he wasn't knocking anyone out, but he got knocked out himself. He was knocked out cold for three minutes by the world-famous knockout guy. But because of who Suge is, he doesn't cooperate with the police, so he kept quiet about it. In 2009, Suge got into a fight again and sustained face injuries during an altercation at the W. Scottsdale Hotel during NBA All-Star Weekend. In 2012, Suge Knight was arrested for marijuana possession and driving with a suspended license. Police found multiple outstanding warrants for previous violations. Knight was then placed on three years of unsupervised probation. In 2014, Suge was shot again at a West Hollywood pre-MTV VMAs party. This time, the party was hosted by Chris Brown. Knight was shot six times and managed to get himself to an ambulance and had surgery. Even after all of this, he refused to cooperate with law enforcement. A week and a half later, shockingly, someone who was just shot was found carrying out a robbery. He was arrested in Las Vegas for second-degree robbery and driving with a suspended license together with comedian Cat Williams. In 2015, the biggest one happened. Suge had been getting in and out of jail like it's such a sweet place. If other people never talked about jail as such a horrible place, the way Suge went in and out of jail would have made people think it's a pleasant place. Knight was arrested on suspicion of murder over a fatal hit-and-run incident that left one man dead. He turned himself into the LAPD and was later hospitalized for a possibly fatal blood clot, which delayed his trial till September. At a March 20 hearing, Suge Knight collapsed in court after learning that his bail was set at $25 million. His bail has since been lowered to $10 million. While awaiting his murder trial, Knight fired his lawyer because he suspected a leak from his legal team to the prosecutor. When September arrived, Knight pleaded no contest to voluntary manslaughter. The judge sentenced Knight to 28 years in prison, 22 years for running over the victim, and 6 years because it was Knight's third strike under California's Three Strikes Law. By December 2018, Knight is incarcerated at R.J. Donovan Correctional Facility in San Diego and will not be eligible for parole until October 2034. Having heard about Suge's criminal history, you can agree that a person who doesn't really care about consequences must be terrifying. Let me know what you think about Suge's story in the comments section. Hey you, yeah hey you, like the video? Great, we got another one for you that we guarantee you'll like and all you have to do is click on the screen. It's free and without any hidden fees, but you have to click on it fast because this message is self-destruct in 5 seconds. 3, 2, 1.